Hi, this is episode 24 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. On Thursdays, I like to cover a topic in the tech news sector and specifically discuss how it relates to the development community. So today, I wanted to talk about getting Rails 5 on Heroku. Throughout the past few years, Heroku has grown to be one of the most popular deployment engines for Rails applications. I personally used it in the majority of the courses I've taught because it's a great offering for quickly getting a Rails app live on the web. However, with the ease of Heroku also came a number of limitations, and typically I find myself having to migrate applications to other hosting providers such as DigitalOcean or Linode as soon as an app reached even a hint of popularity and traffic. For the most part, the Rails community seems to treat Heroku like a great prototyping tool, but not the best option when it comes to production application hosting. Well, based on the announcement this month from Heroku, it looks like they're trying to expand their offering in a number of ways. I'll put a link to the announcement in the show notes. However, here's a summary of the features. They're switching to using the Puma web server by default as opposed to the poor performing WebRick server. This has always been possible. However, with the integration of Action Cable and Rails 5, WebRick is no longer a viable option, even in development. They also do some nice things, such as matching your server thread count with the active record thread count to prevent errors in production. If you're using Rails 4.2 or above, Heroku will serve your static asset files. Before that, you'd have need to use the Rails 12 factor gem, so it's a nice convenience. They've also integrated some refinements to working with logs. You'll still want to use an outside add-on such as paper trail or log entries. However, the log files should now be easier to read. You'll be able to have a little more protection against destructive actions on your production database. If you attempt to drop a database, it'll give you an explicit warning as opposed to simply performing the action. Hopefully you're not in the habit of running rake DB drop on a normal basis, but now at least you'll have an extra layer of protection. There is also better support now for the way that it handles the secret key base config variable to help protect against developers checking that into their app source control. Some of these items were developed in Rails 5 and Heroku simply giving you an interface and letting you know they're available to access them using their system. However, it's good to know that some of those key differences are there. 